Where do you think creative energy comes from? Mm. <laughs> where does it come from? I don't know. I think that uh, I think it's part of us, it's part of being human. There's something that that we have that uh, makes us want to explore. I think I think there's some essential need for us to to do new things. You know, that's part of our makeup. You know, so I, that's that's mysterious, though. I don't know. I mean, that's to me, that's the best I can come up with is that there's some. You know, like if you ever watch 2001: Space Odyssey, <laughs> where they're some aliens come down and instill this drive in us to, well, it's a drive to conquer, really, that they instill in us. But I think at the same time, there's this desire to, to well, exploring means partly creating things to, you know, technology and things. And, but um, I think the artistic side is, is part of that, too, that we, we have this, some innate desire to, to explore and creativity enables us to do that. So it's like, uh, it's just... A natural kind of like almost like an instinct maybe seems like it um, and maybe it's a survival thing that we you know we had to do to survive but there's the, the beauty side of it is that you know we get this reward of being able to create things that please us that are beautiful too so. yeah let me oh, just let us like, get your hands um, <clears throat> how do you feel when you're working with creative energy if it's going well, it's um, a feeling of just sort of being in a, a zone in another place. If, it, if it's if you're in, if you're creating well, then I think you get into this place where um, maybe you're not really thinking; you're just kind of going with um, that energy that that you have at the moment. And, um, and it can be exciting, although if it gets too exciting, sometimes it, then I just lose it, it seems to be. But there's kind of a, a, a low burning excitement with it too, but it, usually it's best if you're just sort of going with, you know, yeah, it's like, the feeling is that, well, I've heard this said by, I don't know if it was like, or not heard it, but read it by, I think John Coltrane, and I've, other people have said this similar idea, and you've probably heard it from other people. To that it's, it's like you when you have an inspiration you have some kind of inspiration then what you're tapping into is something that already maybe exists and you're just trying to flesh it out you know so that's the feeling that you're getting is you're just you're just kind of going with this inspiration and trying to bring it all forward so it's not like you I mean you have to put effort into it but you're just trying to chip away at, at or not chip away but you're trying to um, realize that thing that maybe is already out there. So okay. it's, I don't know, it's a weird zone, but it's a, it's a, um, it's almost, I don't know, it, it seems like it's something we kind of stumble into and then you just ride with it. You know? Oh yeah, it's kind of ser serendipitous and hits you any time. Right. Um, what do you feel like is good for the flow? <clears throat> like, what, what are some things that that you feel like enable its, you know, getting it going or keeping it going? Uh, hallucinogenics. No, I'm just kidding. Um, actually, one thing that, that I can try, and this is, I play with the trio of mine, it's Matt Flinter Trio, and we'll, we'll do uh, what we call music du jour, where we each, often on our gigs, we each write a tune the day of the show that has to be played that night. So it's like forced creativity, kind of. And often that produces, produces stuff, at least I can speak for myself, it's not very good, but but by getting into that practice of doing it regularly, I feel like we enable ourselves to um, experience inspiration more often when you don't expect it. I mean when you're when you're getting your mind into this you know, into this mindset of um, creating and you're you know, you have a deadline, you've got to create a piece of music by a certain time. So you just have to get it done, you have to get it finished. Um, and that process of, of creating, by doing it on a regular basis, I think that, you know, maybe you're making more connections in your mind 
that, that enable you when the inspiration does hit, it's easier for you to create something, you know, something good. So a pra I think a practice is a really, even though, you know, people don't, I, I, people feel like, well, it's this, this spark of inspiration that's unpredictable. But there is a craft to it, too, and so by, by working on that, you know, craft, um, you're more prepared when the inspiration hits. A little weight training it for is. your, yeah. for your, uh, create, creatrons. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you, what do you make of, um, do you think there are any connections between dreaming and creativity? Mm-hmm. Well, what are your thoughts on what some of those connections might be? Uh, I wish I knew more about it. I mean, I've had times where I've dreamed what was probably a new piece of music being played by somebody in my dream, right? And maybe by me and somebody else, or you know, just you hear something in, in your dream, and, and I've never been effective at writing that. Well, there's a couple little things I've been able to capture, maybe. But uh, the bet that <laughs> I did... I did uh, dream a tune one time. I dreamed what felt like a B section to a tune. And so the next day I wrote it down. And uh, and then I kind of left it. And then a few days later I revisited it and realized that it was a Bela Fleck tune that already existed. So I discarded it after that. But I had learned the tune in my sleep, you know. That was interesting. I um, learned that, that section of it. But I think, you know, dream, yeah, dreaming, it seems like you really tap into the well of this mystery and creativity. And, you know, honestly, I, I think that it's something I need to explore more because it's so hard to, when you dream, it's so hard to remember your dreams unless you really make it, probably unless you make a practice of it. And, and uh, record it right at that time, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I, I'm not the best person to ask about that because I haven't. I've only had a few little things that kind of came out, and they were still never exactly like they were in the dream. But I got something. You know. I don't think I've ever been able to pull one out too. I've, I think I've maybe come up with, or you know, who knows what's going on when you're in a dream and you're doing something. Mm -hmm. But I've never been able, able to pull one out either. And the, yeah, and the one that I did pull out was somebody else's tune. Actually, that happened to Charles Sautel. You know, the great guitarist from Hot Rise that supposedly he <laughs> dreamt a tune and and then he woke up and learned it on the guitar and, and I, I wrote a tune in my sleep and, and then he played it for somebody and, uh, and they said well, yeah that's uh, you know some old time tune that already existed but he had learned it in his sleep you know he learned it very quickly just dreaming it so he thought it was pretty funny you know, that he had that's about my limit of my experience as well I guess yeah it's like that's a good tune yeah it's called this or whatever you know. <laughs> um, do you ever dream lucidly? I had briefly. Yeah, I've had a few. I actually, it's funny because I read a book on that a long time ago, and then I you know, had it like the next night, or you know, while I was. You know, yeah, and that was, you know, usually you have this dream where you're flying, right? So you're talking like you know, and you're conscious, but asleep. And, uh, that would be a great opportunity to write. And I, I got so excited from flying that I woke up. You know, it's always been like the few times that it's happened. It's like a few seconds and I wake up. But that's an amazing, that's a really interesting experience that it's like, you want to be able to, you know, I want to go visit John Lennon or something and let's see what he tells me, you know. Or Bill Monroe or whoever, you know. There should be a lot of potential in that. I mean, that was good. Um, what do you think is bad for flow? Like what constricted or block it up or or just get you off the track of it mm. <laughs> um bad for flow for me probably the, the the thing that constricts me the most is allowing myself to get into the daily routine of i've got to book gigs i've got to do business i've got to do um you know all these day-to-day -day things clean the house whatever these things that if i allow time maybe first thing in the morning or just you know, sometime during the day where at least where I'm playing the instrument you know that's a very basic thing but then you allow some time for creativity to flow up but yeah I think for me it's just probably um, allowing my day-to-day -day chores so to speak 
take over. I don't know. Otherwise, I think otherwise, you know, it, the, sometimes the most mundane stuff, though, where you're just driving or washing dishes or something like that can be the best vehicle for just opening up. You know, you kind of get into a zone when you're doing that. When you, at least for me, if I'm driving out west or somewhere, don't really have to think about anything. Then that's often where some of the best stuff might might come. So I got to pull over and write it down or record it or something on the spot. Um. Yeah, it's like you kind of hypnotize yourself doing something simple, and then all of a sudden you're just open. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to force any things. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Uh, shit. Uh, oh yeah. Um, if you had some advice to give to somebody who was just kind of starting to unlock their creative stuff, what what, what would you give? Them? What's what's Matt's secret to uh, like some something that, may, or, or maybe something that like kind of helped you get to the next level with it or something? Mm. Mm, right. Um. Well. One thing I would say is just expose yourself to all kinds of music and, you know, study the stuff that you like. If there's something about, um, you know, Bela Flex music that you like, what if, take it apart and figure it out what you like about it. Or if it's Beethoven's music or whatever, you know, just, I think if you sit down and, and um, look at what other people have done that you like, you can learn a lot from that. It's not that you want to obviously steal ideas, but I mean, you can, I mean, it's, everything comes from what came before you, so, you know, you're just part of this, by writing, you're kind of part of this stream of on, ongoing music that, that's that been going on for forever, and if you, the more you understand what's happened before, the more you are informed to therefore be more creative, I think. I mean. You know, when you have the thing is, when you have a, a a new idea for a let's say for a tune, let's say for a fiddle tune, right? And well, how do I finish this? Yeah, that's the hard part is finishing it. The more I've got, the more information I have from what I've learned, the more options I have to finish that tune. Instead of being stuck in a rut, that's the thing is you. I mean, everybody's got their style, which could be a rut maybe, but it's a style is, is good to have. But I mean, the more uh, the more options you you have, and the more the more informed you are, the more you're aware of different kinds of music and different ways of writing. The more chance you have of fleshing that tune out in the way that it needs to be fleshed out. You know? So I, I think I think the fun part of music for me is uh, is learning, and so if I'm if and a lot of that is just listening, you know, and, and learning about the stuff that strikes me as, as you know, great music. So it, um, and there's such a huge world out, out there that I, I think just be open-minded and explore uh, all kinds of music and see where it takes you. It's, it's frustrating as, a, as somebody who likes music that more folks don't really get into doing their own style like um what, what, what could you tell somebody who was like really into you know into a, a certain thing but they weren't allowing themselves to be themselves like how could you t- tell them what would you say to, to like kind of like tell them hey man this is this is important it's important for you to be you do you or whatever right that's interesting because um i think I think we all have to have like a mentor, whether it's someone that's even alive or not, but you have to have somebody, something that you follow as your creative or musical like role model. Right? And, and you know, a lot of great musicians have picked apart you know, musicians that came apart, came before them and, and completely learned their style, and then they they have this solid foundation. But it's not that you want to copy that person, right? So how do you break out of that into your own your own style? Um, and I think if you are aware of your own style but aren't expressing it yet, um, maybe you need to throw yourself into other combinations of musicians or try 
you know, I'm not really sure, but for me, um, one thing that that uh, that I felt like gave me some direction. Okay, I mean, I grew up playing bluegrass. I mean, I grew up playing, playing traditional bluegrass on the banjo, especially. So I felt like I got a pretty good education in that style. And then started playing mandolin, and I had to copy David Grisman. I had to copy Sam Bush. Um, but then I started listening to Miles Davis, and I had to, had to get everything he ever recorded. And I had to learn how he phrased things and how he arranged music, especially how he would do his arrangements. And so I was getting this outside influence that was not part of bluegrass, but really spoke to me. So I think if you just follow, again, expose yourself to as much as you can, as you care to, and then follow the stuff that you like, and it doesn't matter what it is. And to me, style is a combination of things that you've been informed by with this extra kind of magic of yourself that you throw into it. You know, so there's nothing wrong with copying what came before you. And that's the trick though, is, is finding your own voice outside of that or growing out of that. But that's 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 the best stuff, is the stuff that is informed by what came before it, I think. And so it's got this tradition behind it you are expressing that tradition in your own way. And I think with time it comes to everybody, you know, if you just keep keep doing it. Where do you think your creativity is leading you right now? Um, trying to um, It's weird. It's like to me um, I'm trying to uh, go further out, outside of myself, and yet simplify things. I don't, I don't know, it's like, as I, as I get older, maybe things have to get simpler, but I still want to explore further out and, and find new sounds, um, but new ways of expressing, or ways of expressing those sounds that still make sense to me, so um, I feel like I, where it's taking me right now is... It is getting further along, maybe let's say in the quote unquote bluegrass style, but uh, outside of that, you know, what can you bring outside of that into bluegrass but still be, um, still reflect that, that foundation underneath? So you're always trying to, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just trying to get better and better at fleshing out ideas in the way they need to be fleshed out. But the ideas are still maybe somewhat out there at times. So it's like you have this this balance between what's really outside the box and what's inside the box. And like I heard uh, one of uh, said, a old professor of mine said that um, great music is great because it does the unexpected, but it couldn't have been any other way. You know, it's this weird paradox of like, it does what you don't expect, but you realize in retrospect maybe that that's the way it had to be. So you're not being overly predictable, but you're not being so out there that it doesn't make sense anymore. You know? So I feel like where it's taken me right now is, um, and it maybe it always has, is you're just trying to sort of walk this line between those two elements of uh, newness and what came before you, you know, and, and when you when you grab that in, that inspiration, whatever it is, and um, you flesh it out in the way that it needs to be written out then or played, um, I think the best stuff kind of kind of really walks that balancing act between those two things. But, yeah. Said, but, you know, that was perfect. Like, it's always this push and pull. And it's like you're pushing the envelope, but you're not breaking it. Oh, Alan O'Brien had a good quote. He said, uh, it's not how far out on the limb you get, it's how many branches you break on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> That'll mess you up. <laughs> 
like that. Um, any final, th any final thoughts on like connections between, like, uh, what's your, um, like, do you, do you think, do you feel like, um, oh yeah, <coughs> how do, how do you feel when, um, the flow is just like unstoppable? How, how would you, how would you describe that experience to someone who's never, never really gotten the full flow going? Well, I mean... I feel like I've been lucky once in a while to, to get what feels like like that, you know, where you feel like you've gotten into this flow for an extended period. And it's just, to me, it just feels like you're grabbing onto something and holding on. And it's, um, it, it, to me, it feels like it's coming from somewhere else. And I'm just grabbing onto that.